let's cross over now to Canada and have uh, Ithiolua Leo Olagbaye join us. Uh, she is a sport um, journalist. Uh, also, uh, she has particular interest in the Super Falcons and in Nigeria athletics team over the years. Uh, good morning, Ithiolua. Good to have you join us from Canada this uh, Thursday morning in Nigeria. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, the last time we had you, it was when the squad list was released. And here we are now. It is the day day. Our girls up against Brazil. Uh, they had the camp. They had about 10 days in Spain preparing for this. Uh, they lost to Canada in a friendly game. What you've seen and what uh, Coach Randy Wardrum has said, what uh, Rashida Tajibadi have also said about uh, the team being, uh, of course, ready for this one. Uh, are you confident that um, against Brazil this evening, that the Falcons can get a good result? Um, I think from the onset, I, I made it clear that um, these girls are world leaders. Um, they keep underrating them and they keep you know, proving to the world that we're here to stay, we're here to prove a point. You know, we have what it takes. We're not just um, there to add to the number, we are there to compete. And when you compete, you're competing today in medal. So um, I'm just um, tired of the, you know, um, the analysis from some certain quarters, definitely not from Nigeria, but you know, it seems like they always look at the girls as underdogs. And I'm like, what else do they have to do? Like they were at the last World Cup, uh, nobody expected them to go that far. Even if it was a spot kick and all that, you know, England even you know, knew that they had an, an opponent. So going into this World Cup, sometimes it's good to be underrated, honestly, because you come and you, you know, you shock everyone. And uh, it's even sweeter that way, you enjoy the little more. So, so it has its own good side, it has its own other side. But I believe that the girls are threat. They know what it was take. Uh, we've met Brazil two times. Uh, the competition was 1999 first. Um, it was we were three three goals down. That second one came and we were able to you know, level up. But unfortunately, at the extra time, Brazil you know had the upper hand. And of course, we mentioned 2008. That was the last time we were able to do. Um, we scored first, and you know then we lost eventually to Brazil. Yeah, but uh, learning curves, you know, we've learned our lessons. I believe that this team is a fine blend of, you know, skillful players, uh, players with football intelligence, you know, they're rugged, they're, they're, you know, they're tenacious, they have the grit, you know, they're strong. Uh, we have um, well experienced players, we have the younger ones with zeal, with their energy, is the power and all that. And I'm not underwriting this team for anything. Like, we are that team that everyone should look at for. We have what it takes. Um, we've learned from past experiences. You know, representing Africa, like those two nations are representing us at, um, for the female football in the Olympics, and it's a big deal. Like, we've won 11 times with gold Africa. Brazil has won eight or nine times, you know, at the continental level. So it's, it's a serious battle between two continental leaders. And I'm giving it to five weeks. I'm not even like, super far control. I'm not even giving a chance at a draw. I believe we have what it takes to protect like, Brazil today. And yeah, that's where I'm standing today. I'm standing with the girls and we're going to keep Brazil hands down. Yeah, definitely. Of course, uh, we have to stand with our girls, uh, standing with the Super Falcons. Now, let's talk about um, uh, the playing personnel. I mean, uh, you mentioned that uh, we have the squad. Uh, they got to the second round at the last FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, uh, losing, of course, to the English team. I've seen these girls play in Abuja here, and I marveled at the talent that uh, the likes of Deborah Biodu uh christy uchebe i mean uchebe uh and abiodun the way they played against South africa i mean it was it was really amazing uh let's speak to the playing personnel now who are the players uh that uh, is giving you this confidence that come 6 p.m nigerian time uh against uh, brazil tonight we will take out the brazilians in bordeaux 100 percent. so i'm going to start with amaka i i used amaka out the last time and yeah you know, we call her Amaka, we know the disappointment. Amaka shows up when you need her the most, you know, and um, we have that confidence that even when the game is going on, we can relax and we have, you know, a solid goalkeeper right there, you know, getting um, the back of our players. And we have a solid defense. I'm super happy to make his back, we have to see today. Um, it appeared with us in Atio Hale has been formidable and they keep getting better with each game. Um, we have Michelle Alozet, uh, the right hand side, that's the uh, right full back. We have Chidima Okeke, that's you know, uh, 
proven to be a contender with Ashley Plumta, who unfortunately is injured. And she plays in a league that is very difficult. So I love the fact that we're not even struggling, we're not losing sleep over the fact that Ashley is injured. We miss her, but we're not you know, uh, losing sleep over the fact that she's not with the team right now. And when it comes to defense, I, I call the defense the magical, you know, if, um, sorry, the midfield. I call them the magical midfield of coach and the world club. And um, sports followers will agree with me that that is the most impregnable part of uh, coach Randy's, um, let me say, position. Like, we still have new people being invited to defense and, you know, the attack. But when it comes to the midfield, you have like the solid state that makes it extremely difficult for anyone to break into that team. We're talking about Christy Uchebe that plays with the engine of like three people. I don't know where she gets her strength from. <laughs> and you know, um, honestly, I don't know where she gets her strength yeah. from. We have Deborah Bebo, who is a terror. Yeah. As in Deborah, is, we call her Kante. You know, she yeah. covers like every blade of that pitch. And you're wondering like, yeah, she's young, but you know, with the ball intelligence, you know, that Deborah possesses at age yeah. 19. It's, uh, you know, it's really scary, honestly, for that age. And that was why we gave her the name Kante. Like, Kante, she's yeah. Bobo. She keeps getting better. I know she learned a lot from her last experience at the World Cup, so I'm very confident, you know, the world is starting today that we're going to have a good world that will give it all without, you know, making those mistakes that, you know, cost her the last World Cup. We have a magical Jennifer, a change in who is superb. You know, she's she's a player that you can, like, play at various parts of the field and you get her to deliver. I've said it before that she can be a force line, she can be creative, she can be an attacker, a big builder. And when it comes to even goals, she's a threat. Like, she's so skilled and so intelligent. She just moved to uh, PSD just to tell you how much of an asset, you know, Jennifer is to the Nigerian team. We have Tony Payne that I call the brain box of that team. Tony Payne is someone that understands what we call less is more she doesn't do too much she doesn't dress the ball but she knows what to do she has those defense hitting passes that can make a world of difference you know, in any team so we've got them like that we've got um the girl with the blue hair uh, that's a uh, russian that's a uh, superb form red up form she was the mvp of our club Sevilla in spain uh the last season they just come from, you know, concluded and it goes on to say that we have a dynamite on our hands she's so disciplined you know off the pitch on the pitch the way she carries her teammates along the way she's she just proven to be captain fantastic even the build up to this olympics that was the qualifiers there were times that we had to learn how to give us the goal we needed and i always say she knows to, she knows how to bring something out of nothing and that says a lot to, uh, to the fact that she's not just a captain by wearing the, um, the armband she's a captain by doing what captains yeah. know how to do what a captain should do she's your ideal kind of captain very disciplined very focused she knows how to bring something out of nothing and when we move forward like we have strikers like um um, McLean's would uh, a comeback. She was the second highest goal scorer in a league, and that we've not seen her play. But I believe that's someone that can you know, turn um, out that uh, for that record. You know, is a good striker we can depend on. We have Chinwedu, yeah, yeah. you know, bullish. Uh, she can get all the spot kicks. I would have that love that uh, score. It's fine that she's played, played like three times. You know, but yeah, let's see what she's got to offer. We have Agbabola, and I always say, like it or not, just seen um, Asisat alone, spent here to be part of every, any defense. And we saw what happened against Australia. Like, the, the defender was so confused when they started approaching. And that was just it. She just you know, got that goal. And yeah, we have Esther Koroko. I call her a goal coach. She, everything you could ask for in a striker. She might not really have that trends like them here and all that but men we're playing against teams that are very skillful too so this is where i expect esther Conco to clean and one of the things that i got to ask about is the fact that she could uh she was building like a synergy jennifer ha who is equally dangerous and you know we saw the goals they produced during the call the course of this uh build up to the olympics so i would love to see more of jennifer and esther esther knows when to give up the goals you can depend on her she might be a super soft i really don't mind but to a large extent she's one of those you know forwards that we can rely on to deliver on the very big stage i love her confidence i love the fact that you know, she's skillful she might not have the power but at the end of the day what we need is 
have something up here, deliver the goals. We need we need to put the point that we need it. Yeah. So um we have Uche Nakano, she's sleepy. I love the fact that you know, when she's the ball, you are very confident that she knows what's going to the ball. Um she could be a winger, she could be a forward. But I love the fact that she's versatile and she's very sleepy. Like she's the kind of player that would expect to do very well at the Olympics. But you know, when it comes to Africa, we're talking about strength. You know, we're talking about being wanted and all that. But when you're talking about the world stage, you're playing against skillful, you know, equally skillful opponents. So it's not like can you work better when you know, she's playing with uh, or alongside or let me say against you know skillful um, teams to we see what she does at the racing uh, that's a club racing review in America. Kanu is one of the players they admire a lot because she turns up when they need her too. You know, so we have like all the players are more even the best of uh, the uh should i say the the uh the additional four the yeah, alternative players yes yeah the, the, the bench i believe we have a weak bench we okay. have even solid alternative players that can fill in the gap where you know uh where we need players to show up for us so from the defense uh from the goalkeeper to the midfield to the forwards, the strikers, I believe we have what it takes to contend for a medal at the Olympics. Okay. We're not just going there to ask the numbers. Okay. We are going there to shock the world. Okay, now, uh, if you are set uh, the bar so far, uh, uh, I that um, uh, the Falcons are there for a medal. Uh, they've been close before. I mean, our best uh, outing uh, was that uh, quarterfinal showing in Athens. Uh, in 2004, uh, when we got to the last state, of course, hopefully, uh, this will be the Olympics that the Super Falcons can get to a medal winning position. Now, let's talk tactics. Coach Randy Wardrum, I mean, uh, the last World Cup, uh, before that World Cup, there were those who thought that um, uh, Randy Wardrum should be shown the way out of the Super Falcons. And he, he went to that World Cup, proved everybody wrong, and people started calling for a new deal for him. He has a new deal now. Uh, the first target was to qualify for the Olympics. He has achieved that. Then the women African, of course, in Morocco to follow. Now, talking tactics, uh, in times past, also at the FIFA Women's World Cup, uh, we've gone with a bunch of talented players. But somehow, uh, these other European nations, uh, South American nations, have been able to urge our team. With what you've seen that uh, World Drum has brought into play, especially in the last uh, one year, 18 months, uh, do you think that um, wardrobe uh, and his uh, uh, tactics in recent time can get us over the line uh, against uh, these top uh, footballing nations uh, at uh, this Paris Olympics? Um, so one of the things I'm going to give credit to the coach for is the fact that he was able to rejig the team. Um, before now, we had skillful players that had the energy, that had the strength and all of that. But at some point, I think we had a competition in the U.S. Um, and we could not get uh, our players in the U.S. And he was able to convince some of the um, players that of Nigeria that are now playing with us. To play with us. And in making those selections, I think he was able to build a more solid, a more solid team and a formidable one at that. So that's why you have the Nigerians, the full Nigerians, and the, those of Nigerian descent. And for me, it's a good combination. And do not forget, at the end of the day, what we need is results. Sometimes Nigerians want us to like play and uh, uh, I'm trying to look for the word to use like attractive um, football. Attractive, thank you. Yeah. Attractive football. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes what you need is the results. Mm. Against South Africa, remember that it was all um, there, there was even a time some journalists. You know, said as South Africa was going to support us, and we could not, you know, it's survive. Good, yeah. You know, exactly. But this is a coach that understands the task. He understands the assignment. He knows what he has been honestly, and you know, he, what he does is to go to the drawing board and deliver. What do we do? We played. We got a spot key. Captain Fantastic. That's what she does. And that was all that mattered. When we won the South Africa, I love the fact that you know we, we took the game to them. We did not even allow them to play their style, and that is what you know differentiates a regular coach from a world class coach. You know, there's a difference between allowing them and you know you want to not defend. I want to show you how they do go. I know that at times that you just stop them in their tracks, like you don't even come 
to pose a threat to your team. And that was exactly what our midfield did. And that's why I said our midfield is like the joker of the of the of the of coach. You know, we were able to stop them in their tracks. We had um Ali Matu is unfortunately injured. We had the Bora on another level entirely. We had Tebe, who was the workaholic, even though she had to now pair with Nacho Hale, because um, the man was still in the rap when he said. So I will give it to Coach Randy. He knows what he has paid. He listens to Nigeria. He knows what to do to get the result. We might not play attractive football to do because what we want is a three point. You know, but I know that um, we're going to see. I know that we lost to Canada, and for me, it was a joker because he said something during his interview before the match. He said he was trying out, you know, something new. He wanted to see what was going to work, so he wasn't going for a win. And to a large extent, it gets your focus on the ratio. And do not forget that they had like the test penalty um, um, kick after the match. And that shows that this is a code that he learns from his past experiences and wants to do better than you know he did the last time. So I was happy that you know he picked the right um players to to execute the spot kick and they, they delivered definitely. It was five four in favor of Nigeria. So I'll give it to Randy, he knows what he's doing. And at the end of the day, what we want is results. You know, Nigerians, when it comes to results, we don't take prisoners, we just want to see our girls winning. Either we play attractive football. Either we defend, either we need us to go back to stop them in their trap. What we want is results, and that's yeah, what we're trying to do. Yeah, I believe we're going to win, honestly. We need okay. to do the magic. Honestly, we need to do the okay. magic. Yeah, we Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ifeoluwa, Leo Olagbaye, uh, who joined us from Canada this uh, Thursday morning in Nigeria. Yeah? I know you have to, of course, uh, uh, sacrifice a lot to be able to make the show due to the time difference. Uh, hopefully, we'll get you back uh, next week uh, when the Falcons are playing again. Then, the athletics event uh, where uh, there's huge uh, potential uh, for Nigeria to come home with medals, of course. Uh, so, thank you so much. Do enjoy the rest of your day in Canada. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, of course, um, uh, so wishing the Falcons all the best. 6 p.m. Uh, later today, of course, uh, is when that game would take center stage.